Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and this program is about the evolution of consciousness and what that means as we are evolving humans, accessing more of this space, this divine space within us. And that is why I'm so happy today to be sitting with John DeRoyter. For me, uh, there's a space. There's a space that John holds that I is rare. I mean, I've sat with a lot of teachers, a lot of masters, and there's a quietness, a stillness. And um, I was looking in your eyes, and I, I noticed how maybe difficult it has been, perhaps, this is my projection, to hold that space of pure consciousness and yet have people understand that they're that too, and and the and the shock of them not knowing that. Does that make sense? You're holding a space, and I get it. I, I mean, I get on the level that I get it, and where do you, when you're staring at people, what's, what are you thinking, what's going on for you in those moments of looking? Because that's a big part of what you're doing. I simply see what's there. So I see the levels and I see the relationship of, of awareness in, in the case of yourself. I see how you move as awareness in relationship to yourself, your personality, your heart, different levels of your being. And I just see um, what level of mobility you have in all of that. So I'm, I'm really enjoying you directly in how you move within your forms. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing anything that I might be more aware of that? Because I get where you're at and then I, then I, it's not like I forget it. It's just like I, I play in the Maya. I mean, that's, what do you see? I see you moving back and forth between the magicalness of what really touches your heart mm -hmm. and your the experience you have that surrounds that and your experience further further out from that your experience of yourself mm -hmm. and your environment so yeah. I see how you uh, I see your relationship between that that unseen magicalness mm. that moves <laughs> you and um, everything else that you move in right it's like when, it, well. when that magicalness <laughs> fundamentally in your in your living matters more to you mm -hmm. than yourself and your life and everything that you're experiencing, then there isn't anything that can separate you from that magicalness. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is the magicalness of what you really are. Yeah. What, but what's the reason for incarnation? Because we, we are that. We are that magicalness. We are that pure. And then we come into form, not to forget it, but of course that's the culture. But We, we, uh, we come into form so that we can, as beings, uh -huh. um, manifest everything that we are as a being, but in levels of form that are very dense ourselves our persons through our bodies in this world um, so there's the opportunity when we come into our bodies uh, to be able to give form to our beings mm -hmm. that wouldn't otherwise be there does that give form to the very nature of existence which is, or beyond yes. and giving form to existence as as consciousness does what for the totality It enables you to develop as a being mm. within greater levels of form that are what than what are initially there within our beings. Mm. You know, I really thank you because I'm as you're talking, as I'm tuning in, that I just lost that presence. I can feel the old stuff coming in. <laughs> I'm just, but I'm enjoying um, the places I'm. Um, feeling in this and and John's teachings on sexuality I think are really they're different and they're key and it's what people always 
has suspected about sexuality. I'll read one part, one little sentence from his new book called The Intelligence of Love. He says that real sexuality is streams of being comprehended in the body. Streams of being. It's like the sexuality is our pure expression. And it's, is that how you define it? It's the, the, the engine of human of, of humanness it, it's the greatest power that we have and it's the most ignore it's the most abused power as well I mean when it's done for pure pleasure or pure disconnection sexuality is experienced through uh, attraction mm-hmm. and aversion mm-hmm. when sexuality is oriented to what we experience in ourselves and in our bodily appetites, then sexuality becomes separated from what it belongs to, which is our being. Mm. That's a deeper sexuality. But, so you're saying sexuality is pure being. It's the pure... Yes. It's when your pure consciousness is embodied, that's the exploration, the manifestation of the the sex of sex of 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 the of the essence of uh, physical form as expression. Yes. So you would say maybe don't act with someone else from any place other than that. Yes. So how do you? What do you? To, to not act within your life from any other place. Right. Than that. <laughs> But as far as sexuality, how do you deal with the um, distractions of pure pleasure? I mean, of pleasure, of the, 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 you know, the, the nice, the, the physical sensations of that, that people long for. Is that a substitute for what they're missing in their life a lot of times? I mean, it probably is. Whatever it is that you value most, mm-hmm. that's what you'll come from. But how do you get? How do you not get distracted by the pleasure of the physicality of the sensations? In the same way of how you would not be distracted when you sit down to eat a, a, a really well put together, lovely meal. Mm. If you're really hungry, you can just speedily take it in and and eat it quickly because uh, you you want to fill your stomach and it all tastes so good or you can slow down and you can actually enjoy your food so there's a deeper level Mm -hmm. to just slowing down and realizing something more than just quickly eating oh so as you're talking i'm getting that if we embrace the other with the presence it, it nourishes our being Yes, that's what I, that's what I got from what you're saying. So then, in, in meeting, <clears throat> what matter? What would be, what would matter more than yourselves and each other is the dearness. The dearness means so the, the. What does that mean to? What is? How do you? How would you define the closeness? The the love. The 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 dearness is the the profound realization of there being a a, a direct meaning in meeting together that goes beyond the experience of uh, the individual. So there's a a, a dearness in just being close. Yeah, A dearness in, in really actually, on a much deeper level, being together. Mm. So then the individual and the self begins to just slightly fade Mm -hmm. instead of uh, being so crisp that we begin to respond through that manifestation and we we become lost in that and then we uh, in a a polarized kind of relationship um, holding the other responsible for our happiness right yeah so the dearness really is the place to begin I mean and, and in a way of begin all interactions, you know, just whoever you're sitting with, that that dearness, that closeness, that reflected being. If, as soon as you lose sight of the dearness that's there in being with anyone, yeah. 
Uh, you've left your heart. Mm-hmm. And we're here to be that. Thing. I mean, I get it. I mean, I get it. So, it's the teaching is not so much about you. It's about... But people make it about you, in a sense. But it's about what... Who they are. And their pure being. But... But there's confusion around teachers in general. Not just you. That the, the teacher is... I mean, you do have something that you're giving people, but it's they're giving them what they already are, is what I'm saying. Yes. But there's a confusion. I don't know about your students, but I see it in many places where it's the teacher and they forget themselves. Do you, do you notice that? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> what, I, what I really um, highlight more than anything is what you know the truth of. Right. So when you, um, w- when you recognize something outside of yourself, such as when, when we meet and you're at a meeting and you're hearing words and you experience a presence, um, really you're, you're responding when you know the truth of what you're experiencing. Mm-hmm. You are responding to what you know the truth of. Mm-hmm. So as you see it outside of yourself, because I'm, I'm embodying that and I'm, being an example mm-hmm. for you in that, that as, as much as you're responding to what you know in me, you're responding to what you know in you. Mm-hmm. So then you're, you're seeing the connection between uh, what draws you into deeper levels within, and, and you love that you're able to see that in another. Yeah, I know, and what I like about you is that you don't care. I mean, you don't care. I mean, you're not doing this for your own ego filled up, your own ego, you know, support. You're not doing this. You're doing this, I get, because you are the presence to communicate what being is. That's, and it's not about you, it's about the presence. Yes. And (laughs) it's no different from when you see a, um, uh, a small child uh, that's still within its innocence. Anything that it that it does, it's not doing from some ego place. It's innocence that just blossoms into one kind of play or another kind of play. And as it moves out in that blossoming, it also as naturally returns back in uh, to what all of that blossom comes from. And and it's it's not in any kind of story of uh, what they're doing. There, there isn't a, a comprehension of that. So it's, mm. it's pure. Yeah, that would be a great planet to live in where that purity exists. Like they say, you know, the kingdom, that only a child can enter the kingdom of heaven is what you're saying. Yes. And I see a planet that's possible to live in like that. Do you see it? I guess, I guess you wouldn't be here if you didn't see that. It's, it's, yes, it's possible. It's possible um, for anyone. Mm. You know, I. I but I, it, it, I, it costs. It costs. You, you can't hold on to anything mm. within yourself and be in that, that purity and that innocence at the same time. So any kind of personal investment in what you think and what you feel mm-hmm. uh, throughout your life separates you from your own heart. Mm. If you're separated from your heart, you're also separated from its source, which is the entirety of your being. Mm. Yeah. There are expressions of the heart, like song or, or music and dance. These are, would you say, or would you say those are distractions to the being, these expressions of the heart? Dude, <laughs> nothing is a distraction until you invest your awareness in a way that's separate from mm. what you really are. You invest your awareness in some of these expressions. Mm. The, the expressions in and of themselves are pure. Mm. That's a really good, that's really, I mean, I get that. That's a really great distinction. The, the expressions are pure, but as we invest our ego in the expressions, they become distortions. Yes. Uh, and in the same way, uh, the self 
is innocent. Yeah. What distorts the self is our relationship to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So what we use ourselves for. Mm -hmm. And what we use ourselves for then is how ourselves develop. Mm -hmm. Either develop in a way that's innocent and pure or develop in a way that's distorted. As I look at you, it's like moments where I think you might just burst out laughing because... You, I mean, that's the sentence, because you you have like a keen sense of humor. I mean, that's what I'm seeing. And it's all so silly in a way. And this the whole play on top of the, the being. Yes. But you ever burst out laughing about it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, because I'm, I'm enjoying you and... and if, if, if you ever seen a child, uh, a really small child, yeah, in the midst of a tantrum, just completely red-faced, furious, angry, um, out of control, um, and in literally a second, mm. the, the entire program and the story and the emotion is dropped and one second later all of that is dropped and their eyes open and they smile and they love mm. and it's a it's a it's a wonderment to even see something like that because there you realize where there is no ego within that kind of tirade of holding mm -hmm. that the moment that that's dropped um, the heart just shines mm -hmm. and it doesn't require a process as soon as an ego is developed then the ego is in place to then let go because it realizes that it has to to be able to even be happy and then it lets go in a way that is full of a process so that the ego doesn't lose face mm -hmm. instead of it being just completely cut without any process mm -hmm. and then there's an instant return to what we really are and the overlay didn't prevent us yeah as you're talking we'll wrap up but I'm getting you know the the stillness the transmission it's like um, how can I I mean I guess looking and, and being in, is matching it my frequency and me as we the garbage is taken out <laughs> outside as all that garbage is dumped that's what I'm hearing out there the presence is here. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. We met. We met. There. I've been talking to John Geroyta, and I actually really enjoyed this exchange. It was, it was happy, nourishing. You could reach him at johngeroyta.com, and you could reach me, Alan Steinfeld, at newrealities.com. And um, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. <laughs>